Wiley hat today. It's Mossy Oak, man. I like Mossy Oak. I prefer the Mossy Oak stuff over everything else. Real tree, real trees, all right. But when it comes to camo, boy, I just I don't know. I like that Mossy Oak. My shotgun's Mossy Oak. I have a Mossy Oak knife. I got a Mossy Oak hat. Like the Mossy Oak brand, dude. I just I don't know. It's just kind of how it happened. It's not like <laughs> how do you judge camo print? Like, uh, I feel more invisible when I wear my Mossy Oak in the woods, so that them goddamn critters can't see me. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, I don't know. It just kind of happened. I don't know. It's weird like that, I guess. But I saw this hat in our store at work, and I was like, oh. Oh, it's Mossy Oak. I gotta have it. <laughs> so, that's what I got. So, um... I don't have a word. I don't have a quote. I don't have... I didn't eat. Uh, I stayed up late. I was chit-chatting with someone. And... Playing a game. And next thing you know, it's like 2 in the morning. And I was like, fuck, man, I gotta be up at 7. So, yeah, once again, fucking, I fucking jag a schmitty, as Soroka would say. And, uh, yeah, so we're alright, man. It's not like I'm gonna fall asleep at the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all would never see this, though. It's not like it's live. It's not like, you know, it gets posted on its own and I'd fall asleep and die behind the wheel and you all be sitting there like, fuck, Rob ain't posted yet. What the fuck? <laughs> like the text message I got yesterday. About time you fucking posted. Hey, but whoa. I've been fucking no man's land. I'm sorry. I'm fucking, I'm barely getting signal to get a signal, let alone be able to fucking post. Shit. Trust me, I wanted to post hours ago. Uh, but, uh, no, we'll be all right, man. I got my coffee. I got the determination. The ambition. The strive. So, we'll be all right, man. I got a word and all that. Look at him. We got to... They got to unload me. Ah, fuck. Um, they got to unload me, so... I'll do that shit then. And then we'll see where we're going next. But, uh... Excuse me. So I've been eating like a fucking dickhead. And even if I haven't been eating like a dickhead, it's still dickheadish food. And my sugar levels have been fucking redonkulous, man. Like, just levels that I don't like, man. And I just really need to get back on track and I keep saying that but now like my sugar levels are starting to reflect it and uh sorry hold on let's uh try to get y'all more steamer hold on thing that sucks about doing all these uploads and shit is it like kills my battery it's destroying my phone man like and then my phone doesn't want to charge like it should I don't know strange shit man it's closed but okay there we go well that's a little better it's about the best I can do on this bumpy ass road man I'm on 85 south in Commerce, Georgia, just left Kane, 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 Carnesville. I never seen them make it through Carnesville at a decent time. They got a, a CB shop here called Wolfman's or some shit. And uh, dude is the shit when it comes to peeking and tuning these CBs. And her, I'm assume all y'all. Except for like maybe two people that knows about peaking and tuning CBs that watch this. When you peak and tune a CB, it ups the uh, the amps on it, so I can boost a signal out farther. Um, some of the bulk guys, one of the bulk guys, because we have a bulk division. I guess I should bulk 
I keep saying bulk, bulk division. Uh, two guys in the bulk division told me about it. And my buddy Isaac was like, man, when Rob, this other guy, this other guy named Rob, he was like, man, when Rob keys up next to me, he's like, my fucking speakers fuzz in my truck. Like, <laughs> that shit's the shit, man. So he can, no telling how far he's casting that signal out. So, I mean, I just, I think that's cool shit, man. I'm, I'm all about a CB, man, because at first I wasn't, because I know what happens on there. People are always talking shit. Um, some dude got a little racist yesterday, man, and got murked over the mic for it, man. Everybody was jumping this shit for it, man. The first time I had it, I had this motherfucker for like 30 minutes. I turned it on. The first thing anybody said to me was, what the fuck are you doing, Wiley Sanders? Because I hit the brakes, man, because something jumped out in front of me. I didn't want to hit it. You know, I was still funky fresh with Wiley. Why the hell are you hitting your brakes for, Wiley Sanders? So I told him, because I thought I saw your mom trying to sell some pussy, man. <laughs> he didn't like that. So it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. That's why I avoided it for so long. Um, but it, it's all right sometimes, man. It's cool. I'd rather, I get in a lot of no cell phone areas, man, where my shit is completely dead and uh, it's not because I have sprint or whatever it's because when you're in a fucking mountain range and you're going up the guts of a mountain you're not gonna get signal I don't give a fuck who the fuck phone carrier you have except for Osama bin Laden that dude was living in a fucking cave and had awesome cell phone fucking coverage I'd like to know who his goddamn carrier was sons of bitches man but uh or that dude that tweeted from the International Space Station. I can't get signal in the middle of Alabama. But this dude's sending tweets from space. But I guess that makes sense because he's probably sitting on the satellite while he's doing it. So what a better place, right? But I said, man, if something were to happen, I'd rather have, you know, air wave as opposed to no wave. So... That's how that kind of transpired. And, uh... Yeah. Good old CBs. But, uh... We're on our way to Atlanta. My coffee. I got my honey in it, man. But I just... I don't like TA's coffee, man. I just, it's funny because it goes in waves. Like, I remember I used to not like Love's coffee. And I only liked Flying J Coffee. Now Flying J Coffee's okay. I really like Love's Coffee. And I don't like TA or, or Petro's anymore. And, um... Uh, sorry. Nipple rings. Got out of... Don't mean. Alright, anyways. So... So, yeah, man. So, I got their Colombian whatever, man. And it's just... It's alright. I mean, it's gonna do the job, whatever. But it ain't anything to write mom about. Like, hey, mom, goddamn Petro coffee's the shit. Nothing will be better than my Dunkin' Donuts brewed at home. That's how that goes. But all right, man. I hope y'all are having a swell day, or will have a swell day. Swell. She. That's swell. <laughs> uh, have a great day, man. Do awesome shit. And, uh, man, I'll get my shit together here, man. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it going on, man. So, peace. <laughs> Now mid morning. It's almost lunchtime, actually. Uh, as far as the East Coast standard goes, uh, I didn't eat breakfast this morning, man. So I am starving. What the frick? So get the hell out of here soon, man. I've been here for an hour already, man. I made it to my place after dealing with 
ATL traffic, man. That shit sucks, man. So, I guess it ain't no different than any other city. But, uh, all in all, man, it's been a good day. Been, you know, I made it here. I mean, that's good. I woke up. That's always good. Always, always good. So, uh, man, I got caught up on my paperwork for my job. You know, I got to scan all that shit in, man, when you uh, deliver and shit and get your shit signed, man. I tend to do like four or five at a time. I let them build up, man. I don't want to do one and one and one and one and one because that's a lot of stopping and it takes a whole minute to uh, to get in there and do that. You got to park and go in and deal with people and blah, blah, blah. Man. But uh, on top of getting all my work stuff done, I got the word of the day and I got the quote. I've been really uh, jamming Smashing Pumpkins all day, man. And um, I tried to do a Billy Corgan quote, but dude is bitter. <laughs> He had like two things that were okay, but they really just wasn't fitting the, the scenario I got going on right now, or the mood that I'm in. So I wasn't really trying to trying to go with it. But a lot of his quotes were just shit that he was talking about, you know, the original members of Smashing Pumpkins. Like he's really pissed off at like James Eha and I don't know. I heard a rumor or I read somewhere or something or saw, I think, I think it was my little cousin, my cousin Jamie's daughter. She had, uh, Mariah, she had posted something about Darcy coming back to the pumpkins or whatever, but I haven't heard anything. Um, he keeps on, like, using the pumpkins. It's like, you know, hostage. Like, I'm gonna break up the band if nobody buys this next album. Like, well, dude, fucking times have changed, man. You're still stuck in the 90s, dude. Like, nobody buys albums anymore. We just go to Apple Music and get that shit or Google Music or illegally down that shit off the internet, dude. Nobody's gonna buy the fucking album anymore. So, you know, you gotta update your shit. But still great I don't know he kind of went on this like soft tangent shit like with like a door it was like synthesized which it was cool I mean the messages are cool he's an amazing writer but I'm not trying to hear that shit man I'm trying to hear the -na 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 -na. you know I'm trying to hear that that grit that fucking that just crunch turned all the way up with fucking gain turned all the way up dude fucking jamming out but whatever man pumpkins are still the shit regardless I still jam them out um hell he basically had a hand in raising me like there's just so much nostalgia when I listen to it um it each one of those albums kind of fitted into like periods of time of my life so when I listen to like Siamese Dream I remember Germany and then when I listen to like melancholy and the infinite sadness I was like junior high when I lived in Texas and then um, you know, like a door and shit it was like high school so you know each one of them albums does hold something and I do enjoy a door I just sometimes I, they had a great great songs off of it but I just I don't know sometimes I don't feel like being soft <laughs> Sometimes I feel like being a man, goddamn it, being hard. But anyways, so the word of the day is jubilant. 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 A feeling or expressing great happiness and triumph, man. Gotta be jubilant. Gotta be happy. Express that shit. Express yourself. Like Madonna said. Don't do it too much, though, because she went and expressed herself a little too much and made herself look like a bitch. So, <laughs> um, God, she kills me, man. When she was dating Guy Ritchie, like, all of a sudden, she was speaking with a British accent because she took some British penis and it changed her vocal cords altogether. She wasn't from New York anymore. She was from Britain. Cracky. That's Australian. 
Huh, I kind of did go with Steve Irwin on that. Anyways, that chick is phony as hell. She was up there like, ah, bah, 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 speaking all Britishy and shit. And I'm like, you're from New York, girl. <laughs> like, I don't expect to be like, hey, yo, how you doing? I'm in there, yeah. Oh, shit. Forget about it. But whatever, man. That broad. Yeah, express yourself. Express your happiness and triumph, man. Like, the way the society's set up now is like, God forbid, man, if you're happy. You know, it's like, oh, you're happy? Fuck you. You can't be happy, man. Fuck that. You're miserable, so fuck you. Get away from me, man. Quit quit harshing my vibe, man. Like, hippie style, man. You fucking ruining my cheese, man. What the fuck? Like, yeah, dude, that shit's crazy to me, man. People can't be happy for people. People can't, you know what I mean? Like, when people come up in the world, man, I'm happy. You know, I'm like, oh, shit, you don't come up in the world. Good for you. So, you know, express great happiness, man. Express that triumph, man. Feel that shit. Be jubilant. Be it, man. You earned it, man. I don't see why people got to be be so so just negative, man. If you're not happy with yourself, man, make yourself happy. Um, isolate what the fuck is bringing you down and eradicate that shit, man. Isolate and eradicate. That's a good quote. Isolate and eradicate. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Isolate and eradicate. Robert Kemp. You know, I can see that in like a meme and shit. With my name around it. But. Nah, man, I'm telling you, man. Appreciate that shit, man. Appreciate people coming up, man. Because. You know, we all got struggle, man. We all got struggle. And, uh. You know, it's good, man, to see people come up. You should be happy for them, because like I said, we all got problems. You don't know what the next person's problem is. You know, everyone's got problems, man. Everyone has their good days and their bad days. I'm not all happy-go-lucky all the fucking time. Nobody's real careful. Nah, man, I get my bad days too, man. I'm human. We're all human, man. I'm, I'm you know, I've been dealing with a lot of shit, because I want to get out of this truck, so kind of waiting to hear back on something but I'm about to be moving on from that shit because I'm tired of being in this truck and I'm ready to get that next chapter going so I have a hard time like dealing with that because I'm just so so bummed out in this truck man and yeah so you know I mean everybody deals with their own shit and that's what I'm dealing with is just you know, wanting to get a life back and enjoy what life is left, man. Because you can get your time punched at any time, man. And I don't want to do it being a shitbag truck driver. Well, not that we're shitbags, man. But this industry is rough and hard and brutal. And it beats you up. And it just totally kills your health. And... I just don't want to do it. So that's that's my struggle. You know, I don't want y'all to think that I'm like 100% happy all the time walking around like... No, no, no. I go through my ups and downs. I'm For, for the most part, man, I'm generally a happy dude, man. You know, I'm not over here bullshitting y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, everything that I try to tell people, man, how to be or recommend how to be... I'm doing it myself, man. You know what I mean? I hold doors for people, for strangers, for women, man. I, I, I tip uh, waitresses and shit. Even if they fucking fuck my shit up, uh, I still tip them, man. I, I, I try to just put positivity out there, man, in hopes that, you know, while putting out the positivity, it takes my negative, hmm, excuse me, takes my negativity and converts it or whatever it does. Oh, shit. But yeah, whatever, all right? Fuck. <laughs> um, got the quote of the day, man. We're going to move on to the quote of the day. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So, man, if you get in the habit of doing this shit, man, and trying to do good shit, then it comes natural, man, and you just continue on doing it, and it'll work out well. 
you know, it, it becomes, it, it's like anything you do, you know, anything that you're good at now, you wasn't always good at before, you know, people who like play guitar or drums or paint or draw or, you know, tattoo artists, you know, not every tattoo they've ever done was fucking gold, man, I'm sure every tattooist has a tattoo that plagues them, like, yeah, I really fucked that one up or whatever, or, you know, trying to learn that new riff or you can't get that drum roll down or whatever man I mean it could be sculpting welding painting anything you do man you wasn't good at it off the bat you you may have had a, a natural knack for it but you know you repeatedly did it and you became excellent at it and um, you know it just becomes it becomes a habit you know it just becomes something natural to you and uh that just, that covers everything, man. It's Aristotle, you know, Aristotle. But, uh, yeah, man, practice makes perfect, right? That's what they say, make that shit happen. So, I was looking up, uh, Gigantopithecus since yesterday was Sasquatch Day, and they got some models of them. I was going to post a picture of it, man, but I'm not really too savvy on that with the whole phone deal. It doesn't really work out. And then, uh, I don't know. Maybe when I get a computer, I can start adding pictures in. Like, y'all watch these YouTube channels and shit, and these motherfuckers are fancy with it, boy. Got all kinds of cool graphics going on and, and fucking add-ins and shit with voiceovers and fucking things that pop up in the corners and um all kinds of fucking neato shit man and I just it's just me and my phone with the camera setting I get about as fancy as iMovie will let me get adding some fucking I played out all that damn music shit um that they had so now I moved on to like their sound shit their sound clips I wish I could put in some of the music that I have on my phone, but there's copyright issues, and man, there's always somebody, man, trying to bring you down. The whole world knows that if I put a, dude, if I put a fucking song up there, the whole world knows it wasn't fucking me. I mean, how do you get around that? Do I have to put in their name? Song is for, I don't want to have to pay fucking Billy Corgan money because I threw his song into my fucking... YouTube post for fucking 10 seconds or you know and they have a list of like shit that you can do that isn't owned by Warner Brothers music or some fucking music corporation I don't know man corporate swine scumbag sons of bitches um, I don't know figure all that shit out now YouTube actually has uh, music that they have for these videos but I need a laptop for all that shit, man. I'm sure I could do it on here, but you could do crazy shit where you could fade it in and fade it out. And I really just tried to do it on a phone. It's fucking miserable, man. It's like, you know, what the fuck? You know, I don't know if that works out. So, yeah, I don't know, man. If I get a computer, man, I'll probably make these things a little bit more interesting. When I get a laptop, I'll be living in Illinois, living a regular life, man. So then it'll be just more interesting other than me just talking to you from a camera all the time, every now and then showing you something interesting that happens in the road uh and on top of that i wish i had like um a dash cam but once again how do i pull that off it would have been different if i had a google phone because i could just take the sim chip out put it in my phone upload it and so by getting an apple phone i kind of screwed myself but i didn't get an apple phone to make fucking youtube videos i got an apple phone because uh my son. I mean, he's more important than any old fucking YouTube video I could ever do in a million years. I don't care if it paid me fucking a million dollars. I get that viral video that blows up. The whole goddamn world's like, Rob Kim, Rob Kim, Rob Kim. Doesn't give a shit, man. It's not Julian, so I don't give a shit. So, so yeah, I mean, I'll figure it out, man. Like I said, I'm not doing this to make money. I'm still not set up for monetary, so I'm just doing this for the 17 or 18 subscribers I have. Thank you very much. I still love you guys. And anybody who watches this, man, I don't. I'm not saying I won't set up for monetary because 
I mean, shit. Get that money, man. Get that money. Like, I just, I don't know. Like I said, man, somebody taught me to believe that money was bad. And it's and I don't know why I ever thought that. Because, like, you know, you can never be as rich in wallet as you have in heart bullshit. Which is kind of true. I understand. But, like I keep saying, man, love don't pay the motherfucking bills, man. So, I'm all about some money, man. And I'm not not greedy to the point where I'm going to shade somebody out to get it, man. But, you know, if I can make some money, man, I'm going to make some money. I'm tired of making other motherfuckers money, man. I'm making motherfuckers rich, and what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, struggling. Just like everybody else in America. So that shit sucks, man. I was watching Rich Piana video, and it was a motivational video on his success, man. And honestly, man, the dude, he just had a lot of dumb luck happen to him. A lot of good shit happened to him. Like, wish the guy earned it, man. I mean, if you if you follow the story of Rich Piana, dude, he grew up poor, broke, man. And, you know, so the guy definitely had it coming to him, you know, some success. And he'll tell you straight, he's like, I'm the last motherfucker that should be this successful as I am. You know, he was like, if I could do it, you can definitely do it. He was like, you know, I had no, I had nobody fucking pushing me along to tell me to go to school or this or that or how to run a business or real estate. He was like, it's just shit I kind of fell into, got lucky and figured it the fuck out. And it just, it makes sense, man. And, uh, you know, I, uh, it's funny because him and I have a lot in common. A lot. Like, I can really relate to dude, man. Like, he's just, he's just like, he's just like the rest of us, man. It's just, he happens to be a bodybuilder. He won Mr. California. Cool. Like, back in, like, 98. You know what I mean? And then just, he ended up, uh, damn, dude on the fucking forklift come barreling ass out of fucking forklift shaking and shit he's still rolling boy I used to beat the hell out of them fucking things but anyways um you know he just had fortunate luck man and he seized the opportunities that he had before him like he was training this dude and dude had HIV but he was getting human he you know they, he was getting human growth because of the HIV and he's like dude I only need like half of this shit he's like they give me way too much he was like so I'll give it to you and Rich was like man how can you turn that down at the time this shit was you know he was saying it was like 500 bucks for 13 IUs well fuck it's real easy as a bodybuilder to use like 9 to 10 IUs of human growth a day so you know he was getting 9 IUs for free every day, like, you know what I'm saying, per cycle or whatever, per per week or whatever this dude was giving to him, so I really helped him out, and then, you know, he was done, he, today he was talking about he was done with bodybuilding, and Mutant hit him up, was like, hey, we want to sponsor, excuse me, we want to sponsor you, and he's like, um, now I don't know if you got the email, but I'm not a bodybuilder anymore, I'm not an athlete anymore, like, y'all are, you know what I mean, like, you're like, no, we, we know. We don't care. We like you. We like how you look. We like how you are. We like how your energy. So they took him on. Um, you know, and he got lucky. For those of y'all who don't know Rich Piano or whatever, man, he, uh, remember Planet of the Apes with Mark Wahlberg? They modeled all the apes off of him. His body shape and shit, man. So he got paid for that. And he said after they hit 16 hours, you get gold pay, which is your day's pay every hour so he was making like 900 bucks an hour dude doing nothing because he was a stunt double so i mean you know dude's got some really good luck man and everyone has this kind of luck it's always around you you just got to realize what's going on you got to seize the opportunity man and i'm you know i'm learning that myself man to seize these opportunities man so i can start capitalizing on it man so so yeah, man, if you guys have an opportunity to make something happen, man, or do something big, do it, man. Because even if it doesn't work out how you thought or dreamed, man, at least you tried. Because you never know, man. You never know. And I'm not talking about playing the fucking lottery or anything stupid like that, man. I, I had this whole envisionment. I had this whole fucking envisionment on the lottery's random, right? So because truck driving is random and lottery is random... That ups my chances of winning, right? I'm a fucking win eventually. I don't win shit, man. I might as well take that two or three, four, five dollars, wipe my ass with it, or give it to the guy who shit next to my truck to wipe his ass with, or burn the son of a bitch. I didn't win nothing. 
So, you know, it's not like win the lottery type shit, man. But if you get business opportunities, you come up with some money, man, invest that shit. Or do something with it that can make you money. Um, I always thought real estate was the shit. But real estate ended up being fucking bunk. Uh, so, and then he ended up talking about his real estate issues in the video I watched today. It was an old video, but it still talked about how real estate, he thought he was coming up in the world on real estate. And he actually did do good, man. When he bought uh, the couple houses and the triplexes in Georgetown, Georgetown was an itty-bitty-ass town, and all of a sudden, one day, Georgetown blew up. Because it's a burb. It's a suburb of Austin. So, you know, just like the burbs anywhere. You know, you get it in the right time in the right place, man, and you get low, that shit will build up. Like Bolingbrook, for instance. Bolingbrook was a little speck on the fucking map. And all of a sudden now, it's like trying to compete with Naperville and shit. And they got like half a million dollar, million dollar houses and that big ass fucking golf course and promenade or nade or whatever y'all call it, promenade. And all kinds of shores and stores and shopping and shit. And, and I was talking with Jared about it, man. We were talking about Bolingbrook. And uh, you know, for all of us that grew up there, we hate it. Fuck Bolingbrook, you know what I'm saying? But if you take yourself outside the box and you look at it, it's not a bad town. Got everything you need, man. Shopping, food, entertainment, two major highways running through it, with a third one just right up the road. As far as 88, you got 88, which is just north, man. You can get to for 355. They've done extended that bitch out to fucking 80. You got 55, then you got 80. You know, it's kind of centrally located for being the southwest, the south, south southwest burbs, the southwest burbs. So I mean, so it's not bad. I mean, and everything's gearing out towards the south and the west anyway, man, because Cook County's fucking up. All their crazy taxes and shit, man, so I'm prepared for all of that shit, I know. People in Texas are like, why the fuck are you moving back there for, man? Because I, I don't have anything left here in Texas, man. I'm, I got my Texas birth certificate. That's all I need. <laughs> I'm, who knows, man? Hmm coffee kind of blue man it was all right man it did what it needed it to but it didn't taste as good as usual i'm all like mm, yum <laughs> so man all right i'm gonna end this shit out man and hopefully these motherfuckers get me unloaded man it's been like an hour and 15 minutes i only had like 16 pallets man but they're pulling that shit off inventorying it driving all over the place to put it away and fuck Ugh. I'm so done with this shit, man. But anyways, fuck you, everybody. Good night. I'm just kidding. Um, love and peace, man. And be jubilant. And make habits of doing good stuff. Later. Well, I got dicked on a load today. Supposedly, it's supposed to be a drop and hook. Pick it up and... Um... Covington, Georgia, and then take it to Birmingham, Alabama. Then from there, pick up some batteries in Birmingham that was already ready. All I had to do was drop and hook that, too, and then head to the yard, take it into the yard, man, and then grab my next load and got out. But, yep, yeah, somebody dropped the ball somewhere, man. I don't know if it was my company lying to me on some conspiracy-type shit or Pactive screwed up. I'm going to go with Pactive screwed up. Because my old man worked for Pactive for like a whole minute, dude. And he said, they suck. So, I was on my 14-hour clock, which once you go past your 14-hour clock, then it just ticks away. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't stop it. It just keeps going. So, I had to come park, man. And this is new territory to me because I ain't never seen a parking lot this available <clears throat> usually my battle with truck driving is finding parking at night because I run so hard so long because I get screwed a lot that I have to run until 9 10 o'clock at night to get anywhere I'm usually always ticking away on my 14 hour clock, always. And um, it sucks. 
So I got fortunate last night and found parking only because of traffic, man. I guess there was construction traffic on both ends. So la di da -di, everybody was stuck in that motherfucker. But so I did find did find parking last night, man, in Carnesville, like I said. So um I just hope that somebody parks on both sides of me because I hate that way I know I'm you know I got people around me man because the biggest thing is uh people you know wrecking Indian shit I don't want to deal with any more drama than what I have to deal with I'm already stressed as it is man like I have been freaking out for like the last couple weeks man like my blood pressure's up and shit so I don't want to I need to but I uh I need to work on that some fusa or whatever fusa, you know what I mean. So, but we are definitely gonna go up in here and take a uh, uh, a very needed shower, nice hot shower, and uh, hang out, man. Get some sleep since I slept like shit last night. So, love, peace, chicken grease. I'm out.